this little guy or these little guys phalanx is coming to pokemon unite very very soon and here is everything you need to know about them before they hit aos island hello everybody jake your resident content cowboy here yeehaw let's get into phalanx phalanx is our expert difficulty all-rounder coming to pokemon unite and without question one of my favorite designs as of late we're gonna go through all the moves all the items that work well for this pokemon how you possibly unlock it cheap Deeper than normal a bunch of stuff in this video come along with me i want to start talking about this pokemon's passive which is actually really cool so it takes less critical hit damage than a normal pokemon but also it has the troopers behind the brass which <laughs> unlocks so many weird interactions like venusaur's giga drain hits it multiple times it can be you know targeted multiple times with lucario's extreme speed there are some really amazing interesting weird bizarre interactions they're going to happen because of how this pokemon works it also has multiple formations which i'll show you in this video and it can hold more eos energy than any pokemon in the game giving it the highest scoring potential especially with like a rayquaza shield out of any pokemon Let's start with Phalanx moves. Tackle and Bulk Up. Very, very basic. Tackle has you charge at an enemy, dealing damage, and gives you a free boosted attack. I'll talk about boosteds here in one second. After Tackle, we have Bulk Up, which is going to give you 30% attack, defense, and special defense of 25%, and attack speed of 25% for a few seconds here. So it's just a nice little buff that you can give to your Pokemon early. Let's talk about your basic attacks here. You've got your Brass and your Troopers here. Your Troopers behind will actually hit enemies at as you are hitting them, if they are lined up in a position to do so. It's a very interesting play style for this Pokemon. And your boosted attacks are going to do something really interesting as well, which is lower the cooldown of that move in slot one. Let me show you. So, as I said, after you tackle, you get a free boosted. Boom, that boosted gets a two and a half second reduction to tackle right there. So your moves come back fairly quickly after you're hitting your boosteds, which leads you to believe that maybe you could run something like Rapid Fire Scarf on this Pokemon to reset your move cooldowns extremely fast. In general, though, you're going to be able to brawl extremely effectively with this Pokemon because of how easy it is to reset move cooldowns. Your next two moves are Mega Horn or Iron Head, and this is where Phalanx is going to get a little complicated. Complicated. I'll talk about all the moves, but each move interacts differently depending on your Pokemon's position, whether they're in Dispatch, No Retreat, Column, I can't remember all the names of it, but you get it. Depending on how your Phalanx are lined up, your moves are going to react differently. Mega Horn is basically an evolved version of Tackle. You attack the enemy, you kind of hit him twice, and you give yourself a shield. It's pretty powerful, it's very solid, and again, it's like Tackle, but better. You move in, do two ticks of damage right there, right into a boosted, and you continue fighting. But the real exciting thing is how this interacts with your second move. Let's say you're using No Retreat. No Retreat lines your Phalanx up like this. It gives you increased attack damage, and you take reduced damage from the front. This is... I mean, man, this Pokemon is so cool. Uh, you hit no retreat again, and you go back into column form right here. So we're going to take no retreat here. We actually do some damage as we move into it, and then our Mega Horn is different. It charges up and does nutty damage. This combination on the PTS before they nerfed it was unbelievably broken, and honestly, it's still so strong. I mean, look at that right there. You can actually reposition how your Phalanx are just with Mega Horn right here, too, which is one of the biggest things about this normally you couldn't reposition this without moving into no retreat or into your unite move which will then move you back into column form right but with mega horn you can actually just reposition no retreat so you're fighting an enemy you're you know you're autoing them you're dealing some damage here and you want to position yourself for a good secure on this regieleki you're continuing to fight and then you just reposition yourself using mega horn and man it's uh it's a thing of beauty. I truly cannot wait to play this. Now, Mega Horn is different if you're going with the Beat Up build. The Beat Up build allows you to throw troopers out, essentially. So you dash, and then you leave troopers fighting some enemies. You leave two troopers there. And they continue fighting for a set amount of time or until you get a certain distance, and then they run back to you. Uh, also, if they take a certain amount of damage, they just return to you as well. It's really, really interesting Pokemon. But Mega Horn works a specific way with it as well. And I'm going 
going to show you that right now. So if you leave some troopers here with beat up, if you throw Megahorn, your troopers will also throw Megahorn wherever they are. And you can set up a situation where you're all surrounding an enemy and then you all kind of Megahorn it at once. It's really, really cool. Like, honestly, man, everything with this Pokemon is so cool. <laughs> I'm just like so excited. So you dash in. You have all your troopers around, and then boom, you all attack with a Mega Horn all at once. All the while, you can be autoing and hitting the enemy while your troopers do the same thing. It's just, I don't know. I, I'm like, I'm kind of just gushing about this thing all the time, but it's one of my favorite designs they've ever put in the game. The plus version of Mega Horn gets you an even bigger shield, and these shields are pretty massive here. And I believe part of it is based off of your max HP. That's what I've read from some of the early data mines for how these move works. So there is a possibility that stacking extra HP with a Pokemon like this will actually be super beneficial. Either way, Mega Horn is really, really awesome, and I cannot wait to mess around with it here uh we can also talk about beat up the plus version while we're here look at that combination i just love it the plus version of beat up is actually going to give you more hp when you hit so you restore hp with it as this move hits which is really interesting uh, you're basically, as I've already talked about, you're brawling a lot with this Pokemon, but now you're going to be able to use this to generate HP as you continue fighting. And you get your plus moves at 10 and 12 with this, so you actually don't need a ton of experience to get fully online. This is just right in line there with Gyarados, Arena, other Pokemon that kind of get this leveling curve, which is really nice. So you can see the HP recovery here on beat up. You're going to recover about 500 HP here at level 12. And look, I'm not doing anything. I'm just letting my little guys fight. All right, now let's talk about your other move option, Iron Head. I gotta tell you, I'm pretty partial to Mega Horn, but Iron Head is very cool as well. It's not a dash move, it's like a jump move. You're actually able to head over obstacles with it, and you jump into a fight bringing all of your troopers with you down to deal damage, and it also gives you a shield as you crash down into the fight. It's pretty cool, and of course, just like Mega Horn, it has two different interactions depending on if you're using it with no retreat or you're using it with beat up. So if you're you're using this move with no retreat your range to jump in is shorter but you get these auto attacks that you could just use while moving around your opponents which is very very valuable it's a really cool way for this move to work right here let's see if we can mess around with this char with it oh he's a way higher level because i reset my level no char leave us alone hold on okay we're comparable level now char we're gonna fight you with no retreat and iron head so I'm going to no retreat in the direction of Char, jump on in, and then look at these autos right here as we just rip them apart. It's very, very cool. Jumping on in, giving yourself a huge shield, and then all of your guys just fighting with you right here. The increased attack damage from the front still exists there with no retreat as you're just ripping through an objective like this and fighting a Pokemon like Charizard right there. Now let's talk about what else Iron Head does if you're not in no retreat. So if you're using the beat up formation, you could leave your troopers around to fight. And then once you use Iron Head, your troopers are all going to sort of run back into you, almost like, you know, Razor Leaf from Leafeon. You leave your troopers fighting, and then you jump to another location, and they all zip right back into you doing a ton of damage. This combination is really cool, and it feels, it's gonna be interesting because I think the way you could play Iron Head and Beat Up is gonna be a little more sneaky inside a fight. So you're gonna be convincing your opponents you're fighting one situation, right? You're jumping in and you're fighting Charmeleon right here, or you're fighting some of these wild Pokemon. And then you just set yourself up to actually dash in and go for the real target that you're looking to fight. It's gonna be interesting because the amount of distance you can close with this is gonna give you the ability to dive the back line of your opponents and set up big plays and big KOs. I still have to tell you, I love, love, love Megahorn and it's gonna be hard for me to leave it, but this battle strategy is really cool. And look at that. Just able to shoot through multiple wild Pokemon with all of your troopers there. Very awesome. The plus version of Iron Head allows your troopers to deal more damage to Pokemon based on their max HP. I mean, a good way to look at that is just onto the substitute doll here that has absurd HP, right? 
So we could see them jump in right here and we're just doing max HP damage as we're continuing to fight this thing. It's very, very cool. Uh, I think it feels like this combination is how this is set up. It's kind of like no retreat mega horn, and then it's iron head beat up. But you really can use any combination of these moves, and it's gonna take you time to figure out which one is the most beneficial for you when you get it inside of a match. Come on, guys, let's fight. Okay, it's time to talk about your Unite move. It's like devil something formation. It just says Unite move right here, but it's Devil something formation. Hold on, I'll find the name. A few moments later. Your Unite move, Dust Devil formation, is basically Wiggly's Whirlpool, but better. Your troopers run around you dealing damage, and while this is happening, you're slowing opponents. You're also moving at a decent clip, so you're kind of running down enemies, dealing really nice damage to them. Just like Whirlpool, however, you'll, you'll notice you're going to do more damage if you push it in the direction of the Whirlpool, so you're doing extra damage as they are hitting them it is based on each one of these little guys that hit so let me show you the difference right here this is standing still that was 14,238 damage if you walk in the direction of this making sure it's hitting multiple times as you're going you're going to generate more damage as you go it's going to be slight because these are hitting so fast but it's just good to notice that there's a direction you can move with this rather than moving the opposite direction you're going to want to move where these are hitting into your opponents because it is moving clockwise so you are going to want to move with it rather than as you can see against it where it hits less a minor difference but a difference nonetheless also your true Troopers take less damage when this move is being used, so you don't have to worry too much about how much damage you're going to take. But in general, this move feels strong, but not insanely overpowered. It feels like a finisher move to me. So you're kind of jumping in, you've already done some damage, you get yourself a shield with whatever move you're going to use, and then you can use your Unite move, rather than using it right at the start of the fight. You're going to use it after you've already sort of started the engagement right here, right? Because as you can see, it was not able to like fully take down Charizard or anything like that in that moment. But if they're already beat, you chase them down with something like this. It's also going to be able to easily hit multiple enemies around you. This Pokemon's going to have so many interesting strategies, literally leaving your troopers behind to finish wild Pokemon and objectives off for you. You could just like, all right, guys, you take care of this one. And depending on how low the HP of the target is, they will actually end up taking it out with beat up. It's just like, it's crazy, crazy good. I feel like I do have to mention that the damage and secure potential from Megahorn is still absolutely insane. You have hindrance resistance while it is being used. You charge up, of course, but I mean, look at that damage right there. It's doing 2,000 plus 1,000 capped on its max HP. The secure on a Pokemon like this is going to be unbelievable. It's just, yeah, it's going to be wild. I'm not sure, of course, what power level this thing is going to release at. This is weaker than it was on the PTS originally, but still, Megahorn, no retreat, is crazy strong. And there you just saw it. One of the only Pokemon, excuse me, the only Pokemon who could score 110 in a goal after Rayquaza time. So it's going to be able to change the dynamic of some matches just based on the fact that it can score more than other Pokemon. Because it has the troopers, each one of them holds one pick of Aos Energy. So you can hold 55 instead of 40. Basically at every rung, you hold five more than any other Pokemon would hold. Meaning if you have an opportunity to break a goal and it's between Phalanx and another Pokemon and you both have full pockets, Phalanx will score more than anyone else on the battlefield. 110 into a goal zone. And you can see some game winning scores because of this. Interestingly enough, while Megahorn will change the direction of your no retreat, your eject button will not change the direction of your Megahorn. You can, however, close the distance on a situation using your eject button. However, again, you're not going to be able to change the direction of it. There are a lot of Pokemon like Urshifu where you could actually throw your move, eject, and move directions of it. You cannot do that with Phalanx. Ooh, close game. Was that game decided by the extra scores I was able to get with Phalanx? I would have lost. In a normal game, I would have lost. It would have been 200, 205. But in this one, because of the Phalanx scores, I actually won. I can't believe that happened just as I was showing this in the practice area. That is 
too funny. Let's talk about possible held items for this Pokemon. Obviously, we're not gonna know exactly how well these work until we get them into the full game. Things like Muscle Band, Attack Weight, I think an Aos Cookie would be extremely strong on this, given that a lot of your shields are based off of max HP. Of course, you could also run things like Weakness Policy, Scope Lens, you could run a Focus Band, you could definitely run, uh, uh, where is it, Razor Claw would be really good on this Pokemon. There are lots of amazing options for this. I don't know if Drain Crown is gonna be worthwhile, it's not really worthwhile on too much of anything, even though you are auto attacking a lot, you get a lot of your damage from the moves you do with this Pokemon. As far as emblems, brown white is gonna be the call on this Pokemon, extra HP, extra damage. Basically, the six brown, six white format is gonna be really, really good for Phalanx. Now, I mentioned earlier that Phalanx might be unlocked cheaper than other Pokemon. There is going to be an event pass for this Pokemon. We still don't know exactly how this is gonna function, but it looks like through this event pass, if you wanna get this Pokemon with gems, you can get its event pass, I wanna say for like 249 gems, and then kind of like the Mimikyu Hollow, where as you play, you will unlock Phalanx. So there's an opportunity to unlock this a little cheaper than a normal Pokemon through play if you are going with gems. If you're going with coins it should be available one week after its release for coins and i believe the number was 14k maybe it was less than that don't quote me on the gold number i'm sorry i don't remember it exactly so there you go that's just about everything you need to know about phalanx before it comes to pokemon unite i hope this video was helpful let me know any other fun interactions you've noticed with this pokemon like again multiple extreme speed procs being hit on this pokemon the fact that you know if you're able to hit this pokemon with uh pursuit from Absol, it has multiple opportunities to get that damage there. It's just gonna be really wild. It's gonna have some huge upsides and some huge drawbacks. All right, everybody, I love you, and I'll see y'all next time. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm excited about this one.